Hey guys, it's Jeff and the official version of iOS 11.2 was released today and in this video we're going to go over the changes from iOS 11.2 and why you want to make that update to iOS 11.2 and also give you some speed comparison test. So first thing is first, what are the changes in iOS 11.2 that might make you want to upgrade? To start out with, we are seeing a major performance improvement with the iPhone 10. The speed that we can get moving throughout the UI is absolutely phenomenal, and all of the animations are buttery smooth. With this performance jump, we also aren't hurting the battery life too much, as the battery life hasn't exactly decreased, but we haven't seen too much of an increase either. I'm not going to say that battery life has improved because that would be a lie, but in my experience, I haven't noticed a decrease in battery life or the overall performance of the battery. We do have new wallpapers on the iPhone 10. Now exclusively on the iPhone 10, you have new live wallpapers. These wallpapers are quite smooth and you might notice that these were the ones advertised by Apple in their iPhone 10 promotions and ad campaigns. I personally love the new live wallpapers and you should definitely try them out if you choose to update to iOS 11.2 on your iPhone 10. Unfortunately, with all other devices, we have yet to see any new live wallpapers added, so stay tuned and we'll update you if any changes are found. Next up is the Apple Pay Cash Beta, which can be accessed through iMessages. Now you can send money directly to your friends and family without having to use PayPal, Venmo, or any other frustrating services such as those. In your Apple Wallet, you also get the new Apple Pay Cash Virtual Card, which actually looks quite cool. You can see it does have a very unique design and is separate from your bank card, so it's exclusive to Apple Pay Cash. If you have money on your card, you can use it with any retailer that accepts Apple Pay, or you can transfer the money to your bank if you choose not to use it with this feature. Moving on, we have the Face ID and Animoji improvements. Face ID now works a hell of a lot better than in iOS 11.1, and it's just a lot faster than we first started using it. Face ID is also used all over the iPhone 10, so obviously an improvement such as this is quite crucial to everyday use. When using Animoji, you will notice a huge improvement as the stutters and not so great facial tracking features aren't seen in this update. And you also get more of a smooth performance when using this feature. Facial recognition as a whole has become a lot better on the iPhone 10, and I would highly recommend upgrading just for these improvements alone because they completely changed the way you use iOS 11 on the iPhone 10. Next up is improvements and changes to the control center. Now on the lock screen, you will notice a bar below the right hand side of your status bar, indicating that the control center is available and you can swipe down to access it. Opening up the control center and then opening up the connections menu, you will find that when you turn off Wi-Fi or Bluetooth through this menu, there will only be a 24 hour period where the connection type will be disabled. After that, it will automatically turn back on. This basically means that you cannot control your Wi-Fi and Bluetooth connections fully through this menu. You will have to go into the settings app to do so. More in the control center, let's take a look at the recording button. Now when pressing the record button and then pressing it once more, it will stop the countdown rather than not allowing you to stop it at all. What's even better is now in your recordings, the stop screen recording prompt will not show up in your recording, making it easier on you if you are needing to edit the recording at a later time. Next up is fast wireless charging. Fast charging is definitely a cool feature, but doesn't fast wireless charging have to be cooler? Well, not so much. Reports have shown that even with the compatible charger and the fast charging in iOS 11.2, the overall charge time between fast and regular charging are just about the same. The best way to fast charge your device would be using the USB-C to lightning cable and proper power brick to obtain the fastest charging possible. Now, those are all the major changes, but there are a few minor changes to note as well. Boot time has shortened significantly, and that stutter or flashing Apple logo bug has gone away, giving us a much better boot time. Camera performance has also gotten a lot smoother. Now, when switching through the various menus within the camera app, the whole process is extremely smooth and you don't get any lags or stutters. Also in the camera app, the color signs and portrait modes have been adjusted so you can get slightly better photos and videos. Animations within the UI of iOS 11.2 have become a little bit smoother, but I wouldn't exactly say that they are the sole reason to upgrade. 
So guys, those are some of the changes and improvements found in iOS 11.2. Now we'll just give you a rundown of some speed test results that were performed with the iPhone 10 and compare those results with the ones that we found in iOS 11.1. In iOS 11.2, we got the highest ever scores in each of our benchmarks, so let's compare that to iOS 11.1. Let's check out some benchmarks with Geekbench and Tutu and 3 dmark First, I'll start with Geekbench to test the CPU and GPU. We'll start with the CPU and that test gave us a 4,230 for a single core and a 10,357 with the multi-core. On iOS 11.1, we saw scores of a 4,116 for the single core and a 10,223 for the multi-core. There is some improvement there, but I think that there is a bit more of a stability improvement in iOS 11.2 rather than performance. Moving on to the GPU test, and we've got a score of 16,102, which is actually leaps and bounds above the scores that we got in iOS 11.1. Running iOS 11.1, we only got a score of 14,936, which also didn't have the stability we see in iOS 11.2. Okay, so we've got those results. Let's move on to Antutu and 3DMark. In Antutu, we got a total score of 217,438 on iOS 11.2. And on iOS 11.1, we saw a score of 170,615. That is a major improvement across the board as N22 tests the entire phone, such as the CPU, GPU, and RAM. On 3D Mark, we saw more improvement, scoring a 2785 on iOS 11.2, and on iOS 11.1, we only scored a 2620. So guys, obviously with this update to iOS 11.2, between new features, changes, and speed improvements, there is a very convincing argument to make that upgrade. And as far as any doubts go, I can say that the benefits far outweigh the basically non-existent downfalls found in iOS 11.2. If you want to upgrade to iOS 11.2, you can do so by going into the settings app, moving on to general software update, and then select to upgrade to the new OS. If you have any comments or questions, please write them down in the comment section down below. So guys, that's about all for our review of iOS 11.2. Thank you all for watching, and if you like this video, make sure that you give us a like on the video, get subscribed, and also press that bell button to get updates as soon as we release our content. So stay tuned, and we'll catch you all in the next video.